welcome to the podcast, Food Talks. I'm Dallas Townsend. I will be your host. And I act as the uninformed consumer asking a nutritionist all the questions that you have. Hello, I'm Jordan Townsend. I'm our resident nutritionist here at Naturally You, and I'm here to inform the uninformed consumer, answering and helping to unpack some of your more difficult nutrition questions. All right, well, welcome back. It is a new year, 2022. I know you haven't heard from us in a while, but we got through the Christmas holidays. Uh, how, how did you feel getting through that, Jordan? Did you get sick? A lot of people were getting Omicron. I didn't, but I knew multiple people within my at least friend group that got sick. Several right after their boosters. Oh, okay. Even more interesting. Very effective. Well, they could have died without it, supposedly. Sure. So They did not end up in the hospital, so that's not a lie. <laughs> right. Well, we're not going to be talking about COVID or any of that nonsense today. We're going to be talking about acne. The dreaded, my biggest fear when I was 13 years old. It's like, man, I cannot show up to the pictures with a freaking zonker right between my eyes. And man, thank God for Photoshop, right? Really revolutionized a lot of our senior portraits because I know my face didn't look like that when I took that picture. Yeah, I mean, honestly, with deep fakes, we may not even have to worry about acne ever again. We but that's we, another topic. We may not even need an identity. <laughs> <laughs> look up deep fakes, everybody. Um, so back to that then. Well, kind of, but we can even kind of start there because that is a lot of where acne and at least our basic experience with it starts, which is puberty, right? Yeah. Somewhere I mean, around, is my experience. As the change starts, right, there's. You, your your arms start getting longer. Your shoes don't fit anymore. Your face is breaking out. It, it, it's weird. So I got a little breakdown here. It's a nice little Venn diagram, and it shows kind of all the different things that play into acne. Because for a long time, we just simply looked at acne as a bacterial infection of the sweat gland or pore, if you will. Mm-hmm. Turns out there's a lot more factors that go into allowing that because we, we've talked about this before. You may re- you may remember there's bacteria all over your skin. Mm-hmm. So why do I not have acne all over my skin? It needs an opportunity, or more importantly, it needs sort of a a weak point. Or I always tell people think of like a crack in the castle wall. That's its way in, and, to, and from that crack, it can exploit that. It gets worse and it turns into. But a at the surface level, it's just bacteria that accumulates in your uh, on your skin and makes those little whiteheads. Generally, it's opportunistic bacteria taking advantage of a weakened uh, dermis. Okay. Now that sounds real fancy, <laughs> yeah. but I'm gonna go into why that is too, because there's a certain there's a lot of things that have to happen before that bacteria but can get into that and start causing an issue. Okay. So that's that's why I may, wanted to make that point. It's living everywhere all the times. It has to find that little way in. So let's start there, too. Now, we got a kind of a little hit list we're going to go down here from hormones, inflammation, genetics, stress, vitamin, and diet. A lot of these things you've probably heard. I wanted to give you all just a little bit more inside detail on which ones really we have have proven cause it. And the ones that we're still, you know, they're still a little bit iffy they're kind they're not they're not definitive if you will so that's why i wanted to start with hormones and just funny enough like you said when does it start it's when your hormones start to rage Mm -hmm. so there's an interesting thing specifically that kind of triggers this is you'll probably notice it girls get acne but typically it's the androgens or the male hormones that end up driving the the acne breakouts that we generally see now it's kind of a weird reason this happens it's two specifically. One is testosterone, which, again, girls do have. Boys tend to have more. Thus, they'll have usually more frequent outbreaks and more large-scale outbreaks mm-hmm. when they have them. The other one is growth hormone. So the weird thing about hormones and why they sent, they tend to do this early on is when these hormones start to act on the body, the first thing they do is they actually increase the amount of uh sweat glands and, and oil cells in your dermis layer as a whole think about when you're a baby right babies have like baby smooth skin right mm-hmm. so they don't have the full workup yet as you hit that 12 13 14 what are you really doing you're growing more importantly you're about to get what way more physically active so one of the things that comes along with that more sweat glands weird thing that happens is when those sweat glands are growing 
it's kind of like anything. They get bigger before the pores and things can actually follow suit fully, too. So what you get real quickly within about one to three years is a massive upregulation in the amount of oil and sweat that's being produced from these glands. Mm. That's where a lot of your acne early is coming from. That's why a lot of people, I mean, I'm a pretty good example. After about 16, 17, 18, my acne kind of got under control. Now, a lot of that was diet, and we'll get into diet, too. But don't most people's... I mean, I know some people can deal with chronic face acne and all that, but... Exactly what you're saying. So this is what's interesting. Most of those people, it's one of the other causes. There's something else most likely... It's not just oily skin. It's most likely something else you're still doing that's still... Like I said, I'll get into the other things other than just upregulation of sweat glands and oil that allows these bacteria to get in there. Obviously, food's one. That's why we'll we'll get to that one uh, next, too. But that's what I just thought was interesting. As this growth hormone and these different things cause them to increase in size, that's why you get the quick breakouts. But generally, as the rest of your body adapts and catches up, things get back balanced and the bad acne breakouts go away. So that's the thing. Remember, the the bacteria can use this oil because what happens is the oil catches dirt. The dirt catches bacteria that may not even be natural to the skin. That's where you get your breakout. So that's the hormone side of it. That's why it all shows up at the same time. Now, this is what I thought was kind of interesting, too. The next point that they listed specifically for this was inflammation. So, remember, we're we're talking bacteria, but they're talking about not even the bacteria specifically causing the inflammation. So, I thought this was interesting. So, it said, obviously, when you've seen pimples, even whiteheads or blackheads, a lot of times they'll have a little redness and and inflammation, puffiness around the actual pimple. Mm That isn't the actual pimple. So that's what's kind of cool is they – some scientists have actually kind of switched it over from like a bacterial issue to an inflammation issue. So this is what was kind of cool to me too. It said that um, they're starting to find that inflammatory molecules are at every single step of acne development. So from the very first stage of the clogged pore, we see clear signs of inflammation and in components, but most acne medications and treatments specific anti-inflammatory properties. So that's the first thing is you've got to get all that swelling and pressure in the pore down. Then the pore can release and actually heal and properly too. So that's where it's even more strange is as these things like androgens and growth hormones and again other chemicals, whether that be chemicals from the environment, whether that be things like foods that you're eating. Because remember, this is what we don't want to talk about, Dallas. Sugar is inflammatory. Yeah, I must say, every, from all these food talks we've had, these so many bad things oils. are inflammatory. Well, and you, bad... never, you never want to be inflamed. I right. don't think we've gone over one good reason to say, oh, yeah, I need some inflammation. Short term, you want more resources to show up to the area. But that costs energy. Yeah. But it also, more importantly, if you don't have the resources and the inflammation, there's nothing to even heal. There's more blood flow there, but there's nothing to actually correct the problem. Mm-hmm. But yeah, from sugar to these bad oils to artificial sweeteners – preservatives they all cause inflammation so we're again like i said they put inflammation as its own single thing funny enough it's these other things causing this inflammation too that might be a part of the acne too that's why they think they say things like smoking a lot of times smoking itself doesn't cause acne but it's inflammatory because it's inflammatory your body can either send those things to the lungs or it can send them to the skin so the skin being less important than the, the lungs they don't get as much anti-inflammatory markers, thus you're getting outbreaks all of a sudden. Hmm. Interesting. So that's kind of the inflammation side of it. Now, the next one is they say genetics. Clearly, if your parents both have really bad acne, you're more likely to have really bad acne. Probably going to have to do with how well does your body respond to inflammation. Some people have things like the MTFHR genetic mutation, which means you cannot detox as effectively as other people. So if you can't detox stuff out of the body, that means those those inflammatory things stay around longer. So all of a sudden you have a higher inflammation value than someone else. Hmm. The other side of that too may have more sweat glands. You know, your your genes may code for more oily sweat glands because your people your your genetic ancestors came from a hotter climate instead of a colder climate. That one's kind of obvious to me. They they list a bunch of reasons, but that's pretty much it. It's you're just getting these weird genetic markers and traits that tend to do worse with acne breakouts. Hmm. Now this one I thought was kind of interesting too. 
Now, they didn't say this one was definitive, but stress it listed as very likely. So not proven outright like the others, but just based on our understanding of stress, it's almost got to be something that's going on. So I thought this one was kind of interesting too. And it just talks about how the mind and the body are connected. Now, when we say stress, the first thing I want you to think is emotional stress. Now, a, a key hormone gets produced when you're in what we call a stressful situation, cortisol. So remember I was talking about the androgens? Testosterone is one of them. Uh, cortisol is actually one of them. It's all in those – they're all in those those what we call sterols. They're all made from the base of cholesterol. Estrogens like that too. Testosterone, aldosterone, cortisol, adrenaline. Mm -hmm. They're all coming from the same place. So this is what's kind of tricky to your body as well is it has to decide, hey, depending on what's going on, <laughs> what am I going to make? You know, if, if they're not eating sugar, why am I making insulin? If they're not stressed, why am I making cortisol? More importantly, if they are stressed, might have to wait on that growth hormone. Might have to wait on some of those other hormones. So that's what's interesting about stress is we it's not – the stress itself, it's the hormonal shift mm -hmm. that happens behind the scenes due to the stress that can cause the outbreaks to come on. So, and again, kind of interesting. Yeah. It's never the thing directly, but it's this crescendo it creates down the line. So that's what I thought was kind of interesting, too, about it. Is more than that is what they listed to the stress. Things like physical stress, working out too hard. Well, that's just going to be a lot of that. could be sweating. That could cause more breakouts. Other one they had listed too is lack of sleep. You don't really think about that one, but yeah. that increases stress on the body, disrupts hormone production. So again, it could make sense. My other reason they haven't talked about it directly yet, but diet. Okay, you thinking if you're eating salads or you're eating Big Macs, <laughs> you think that's going to affect your hormone response? So again, just another interesting example that all goes back into. Not that eating the food is necessarily stressful, but your body has to now allocate more if, uh, resources to a, to a pancreas instead of an adrenal. And you're, you're probably going to touch on this, but why do a lot of people who like have a problem with milk, like lactose intolerant type people, sometimes like milk can be related to acne outbreaks? No, for sure. And, and actually, is that along the same? Let's line get to or? let's get down to that one on diet. That's the very last little pillar. Okay. So, so no, you're sure right. It was on there. Two things, just to stay more on what we're talking about now, milk can be very stressful because once you're weaned, you don't have lactase, the enzyme that breaks down lactose. So you got a bunch of this milk sugar that can't be properly broken down. It's just fermenting in your gut. That's going to itself create inflammation. <laughs> so to me, it's still more linked. Again, this is where it gets strange. Dairy doesn't cause acne. But dairy facilitates the processes that eventually lead to acne. Mm -hmm. So that's where the difference between, like, again, I always go back to this on this podcast. Cigarettes still say may cause cancer. No. Can't say they do. Can't say they don't. So it might. But, but milk doesn't say may cause acne, mm -hmm. even though it definitely does for some people. Well, where people. are those clinical trials, right? Who, where is the people, where's the outcry from people who have been afflicted by acne that won't, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That won't dare, big dairy to put well, that on there. they probably don't know that's what's causing it. Yeah, not at all. Also, also, I need a shower. Also <laughs> been no many, oh, no, 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 you just need Neutrogena Dow. You just need oh, to wash yeah, your face more. True. Proactive. Proactive. You just need Accutane, which is a chemotherapy drug for your acne, Dow. <laughs> that's weird. That's it's terrifying. Yeah, no, it worse, but the worst thing about that is people get on Accutane, their acne comes back. Mm. So, uh-oh, <laughs> that's not good. That's not good. We digress, right? So bef so that's stress. So the next one, again, they listed this one as perhaps. Now, I would almost say this one is more close to certain or for sure. It's all about data currently. We don't currently have a lot of vitamin deficiency data and how that correlates to, to acne outbreaks. But what have we learned on this podcast? If you don't eat the stuff your body needs, it breaks down. Yeah. It gives you symptoms like psoriasis. It gives you migraines. It gives you celiac. It gives you all of these different things. And that's why I just think it's funny, too. Again, jumping ahead a little bit here. That was my big gluten symptom. Well, again, most people's is cramping, sharp pains, diarrhea, constipation. Sure, those are it, too. But my main one that still tells me if I ate wheat breaks out my face every time. So... Just to zero in on this a little bit more, obviously inadequate levels of vitamins may prevent the skin from fighting inflammation. 
again, may also prevent you from actually fully quelling that bacterial infection when it first gets in there. That's where it just gets interesting because there's certain things you need for not just the antioxidant side, but actually skin. The most important one from skin that you've probably heard of or thought of is vitamin E. Yeah. Vitamin E is one of the essential building blocks of that fatty dermis layer. So that's another interesting thing. If you're not getting enough of that, it may not even be you. The skin may not have the integrity it's supposed to. So it keeps breaking and cracking and allowing these things in because it's not able to even do its job. So that's where it gets even stranger. It may not have nothing to do with your hormones. It may just be your diet is lacking something. Hmm. So that's what I thought was kind of interesting too is that, again, they said perhaps, but from what we were understanding, things like vitamin A and vitamin C, which are also anti-inflammatory, are very important because those are going to reduce your inflammation. We know if you reduce that, you're not going to have as many problems anyway. Now, the other one, too, that's kind of interesting, I thought they mentioned, was vitamin D, which, again, starts in the skin. Now, not necessarily your face, but all of your skin. So that's another kind of important one. Vitamin D, as we've learned as well, too, is a major immune one. It, it helps regulate and guide the immune system. So, again, you're not getting enough sunlight. No. Well, heck, all of a sudden, you're having acne breakouts. And that's what's interesting. A lot of treatments for acne are actually UV light therapy. Now, this is just anecdotal, but I remember when I was working in the uh, the cornfields for Monsanto for a little bit when I was a teenager, the more time I spent outside, the less acne I got. And I was, I mean, I was like 17-ish at the time, but I was still, could kind of notice a difference after, you know, that whole summer. Not no, getting any, even, like, breakouts they, or anything. Well, they've been used, like I said, UV light therapy for acne, but they also use it for things like a lot of skin disorders, like uh, psoriasis and stuff. They'll use like UV light therapy. Again, we don't a hundred percent necessarily understand it yet. I think some of the idea is that the ultraviolet radiation disrupts those bacteria that are causing it as well. So there you go. Yeah. You would think, well, hey, I'm sweating in a cornfield. Surely my my head it's dirty. My, and, yeah. I always thought about that with football. I always thought I'd get worse breakouts on like my chin and stuff. I really never got them there, mm -hmm. or my or my head. Mine were all just usually, again, we're, at, we're finally there. The last one that they finally list, diet. So that's what you were saying, too, is you've seen in your life with people you know, dairy specifically kind of triggering foods. Mm -hmm. Now, was that cow's milk outright? Was that just cheese? Cheese. So processed dairy, I guess, well, in no, some form. Well, and again, you can have true, hard, what we would call natural cheese, and it wouldn't be processed per se. Processed cheese is usually like you know, I always tell you those little oh, fake okay. wiggly ones. Yeah, that's not I cheese. Like shredded cheese and, yeah, and that's going to be cheese a little, related products. Well, that's going to be true. That is going to be more processed. Because yeah. once you because something's making it so nice and soft, cheese is usually really hard unless you get the soft cheese. Yeah, the butter case. <laughs> to me, again, this is a that was my big symptom. If I ate wheat. My face breaks out, but it doesn't break out like what traditionally people would think, like where I get a pimple, it gets a white head, I pop it, it goes down and it heals. No, I get this thing called cystic acne, whereas if I eat wheat, I get these big, they almost look like sores, or they, you know how you mean like bump your head and you have like a knot? Mm -hmm. That's what they look and feel like. Just had no head on them? Well, they're red, so they have a huge red like top, but they never head up. They never have a white thing you can squeeze out. So they get big and lumpy. They're these big sores. Then they eventually go back down, and then they scab over. Yeah, is that even acne at that point, or is that just a sore? You see what I'm saying? Yeah, it's weird. It's called cystic acne because yeah. it forms a basically a cyst underneath the skin. Yeah. So even weirder, right? So that's the thing. That's how I still know today. If I get cross-contaminated with wheat, my face breaks out. If I don't, that's what I say. I can eat corn, rice, sugar, dairy, anything. I'm fine. As soon as I eat wheat, my face breaks out with one of those. Now, they're thankfully, they're extremely mild because of the, such a low amount of wheat that I currently eat. The problem, too, for me becomes if I start to eat it all the time, face mm. will stay break out, broken out, but then the constipation starts. Well, I was just about to say, we all knew... A kid in like high school or junior high that had just chronic like scars Horrible. from acne. And they're like, yeah, I just don't know what it is. Probably their diet. Like, I mean, they're, I mean, they're literally I drinking a they Mountain Dew with advice. a pizza stick. Exactly. And they're but like, yeah, I don't know why I don't feel. The very kids good. I can remember, I don't think they were eating well. 
No doubt. I mean, let's be fair. What what under eighth grader is eating well? And the problem is we're all different. So they could have just been like, oh, well, everyone eats the pizza and drink Mountain Dew. Yeah, well, you can't because this is what it happens to your face. No, it can't be that. Aren't and you? No gl- one else has that. Like you're special. Aren't bro. you just glad we learned that lesson early with gluten? Yeah. Well, our we, mom was just like, hey, y'all. I I understand it's terrible, and everyone else eats this way. Y'all cannot. Like I, said, I remember getting on the phone with Dr. Marshall when we sent our initial tests and stuff off. And he's, he was like, you just, he's like, man, you can't eat this stuff. He's like, if you keep eating this by by your mid-20s, you'll most likely be have Crohn's disease. I have friends of mine, in, literally, in college that I knew that, I'll never forget, he, this guy was athletic. I mean, he was thin, you know, so he wasn't like built and strong, but he rode bikes like long distance. Mm-hmm. Like, it's a pretty in-shape guy. I never forget. He had a flare up. He went to the hospital. He woke up, and they had removed six feet of his colon. Dang. Like just bam, bam, bam. You don't have a colon. Sorry, we had to take it out. I was like, and that's what I remember asking. I was like, have you changed your diet at all? Like, have you looked into any of these things? He's like, no, nah, not really. Doctor said I don't need to. And he, that, I was at that point in my life. Obviously, you know, I was finishing school slash about to start practicing this stuff. And some people just don't care to house. Some people don't. Hey, hey, man, clearly that's working for you. Clearly taking steroids and not being able to absorb any nutrition and just, you know, quick removal of six feet of your colon and you're fine with. How much? How many feet does he have left? How long is the normal colon? Colon's only about 12-ish. It's not very long okay, at all. Okay, about half. He's like, waiting until they maybe remove 18, the other 18. six, and then he's going to start getting his life right. I just remember thinking, I was like, hey, man, like I have celiac. I have to eat gluten-free. Like, have you ever... Thought about that? Mm, no, not really. Don't really feel like doing it. Oh, hey, good luck. Enjoy. So that's the sad thing, man. Is like, thank God we had someone who not only was able to identify that something we were eating was a problem. Obviously, you kind of knew that. Mm-hmm. But got you tested and then helped us implement it. Because that's what I never. I try to tell everybody. Like, look, don't think going gluten free was easy. <laughs> Hell, the first two years were still not easy. But eventually, it's just what you do. Same with cheese. You know, if if cheese is what breaks you out and makes you makes your back break out, and like same. That's what just to go back to the steri- the the androgens thing. One of the biggest problems with taking HGH and steroids: back acne. Horrible, horrible, horrible. You can always tell when those guys take their shirt off. Those what androgens. Is it about the back, though. Anything something about the an- something about the androgens. No, no. My my only thought would be there's way more sweat. And oil glands on that surface area than here. That might be why, as you again, most people doing steroids are 20, 25, 30 plus. That, that to be, to me, would be just where their breakouts would happen because of that. Just more of them, not yeah. really any other reason. But all of that to say, the, the last one they mentioned specifically was diet. And again, I think it has to be that because again, your body will also use your skin as a detox if it has to. So if, the, if you're eating all these foods that it doesn't like or agree with, it'll use your dermis to just push out some of that extra junk and crap so it doesn't have to try to deal with it. A lot of times that just ends up being the face. This kind of goes back to the pimples before the cystic one, just regular pimples, right. whiteheads. Is it good to pop or not? So, it's fun to pop. People make Instagrams about it. Doctor Pimple Popper. Our popping. People is a love subreddit. watching the pop. But is it oddly satisfying? Is it good for you? You gotta be you gotta be careful. It's obviously not gonna kill you, but you just have to be careful because of scarring. If you do that over and over and over by breaking, you remember you're breaking, 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 breaking. Versus if you let it just heal on its own. Yeah, the the jury is still out because some people can get away with it, but some people just are more likely to have their skin scar. Does it heal faster? Do you think? I, I do. I do actually think that if you if you got if you get that pus and stuff out of there, my thing too is more than anything, the best acne because we need to talk about that too. The best acne treatment I've ever gotten is actually not for sale. It was it was made by Mississippi College. A friend of mine's mom is a. a is a professor there. And she ran, I mean, for lack of a better word, a small clinical trial. She used, she, they formulated this stuff, gave it to the football team to see if they could help uh, quell staff. I think that's actually what they were using it for originally. 
But funny enough, what they found was it made all their acne and stuff go away. So all this stuff was was alcohol, um, salt, and then it had a bunch of other like little niche type things. No antibiotics, no drugs. How important were those niche things? Is that the linchpin of the secret formula? Uh, it had one of the weirder things it had in it was um, aspirin. I thought that was super strange, but it was. She was telling me it was something about aspirin. The molecule disrupts bacteria. It's also anti-inflammatory, right? Because we use aspirin as a blood thinner, stuff like that. So how did you apply it? You just rub it's it It's a liquid. On, so yeah, you, you shake it up because the salt will solidify at the bottom. You shake that stuff up, and if you just dab a little bit of that, let it let the alcohol and the salt, the alcohol dries, right? Then the salt is left there. What you really just created was an environment that the bacteria can't live in. Mm-hmm. More importantly, the alcohol sanitized, killed anything that was living in there. Salt makes it where new bacteria can't grow and develop. And again, I'm telling y'all, it will dry your acne up within three days. It's amazing. And again, I just call it the pink stuff. And again, you can't buy it. You can't get it. Don't I don't know why I'm telling you. Hear about this. That's what I told you. I told, I told Walker, I said, I don't, know how this, I don't know how this stuff's going for your mom, but it works. I'm telling you it works. It's the best stuff I've ever used, and it's not chemical. It's not harsh because that's the other thing. A lot of these face washes strip all that oil out of your face. You know the problem with that? Your body now has to make twice as much oil because you just took all of the oil off. Hmm. Same thing with washing your hair all the time. You don't really want to wash your hair every day because you're stripping all the oil out of your hair. So if you're getting hot and sweaty and gross, sure, wash your hair with shampoo. But realistically, most women know this, most men don't, really wash your hair every two, three days. That's really what you need to do. That way it doesn't have to try to overproduce all this oil. Same thing with all these, again, these different face washes to me they're too harsh and that harshness strips away some of your natural protective which then allows dirt and other things to get in there your skin floor is disrupted you've got more outbreaks hey buy more of our product for outbreaks what a great what a great marketing tool seriously that's acne yeah that's uh they didn't teach us that in school so i do the podcast now i'm more landing to food causes the majority of your outbreaks Again, I would, I still just wouldn't say and ma- puberty. majority because there's a bunch of people out there eating stuff. It doesn't do anything. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't do anything to them. Well, all the, the cold cases, the ones where they're like, we just don't know. You we're said just... it best right there. If you can't figure out what's causing your acne and you've tried everything it's, except changing your diet. Then it's your diet. Exactly. That's how I feel. That's a better – and to me that's way more true to the actual what it is because, hey, what have you not tried? Right? I mean, come on. Let's. We're not. There's not a lot of options left on the table anyway. People are most resistant to changing their diet. Like I think some people would probably give up their pet before they gave up a, a food that they like. Two things you don't talk about: food and money. <laughs> no yeah. one wants to even discuss those things. Well, I think we uh, really summarized that one. Hope y'all enjoy when you're listening. Back for the uh, the new year, 2022. New New Year, same podcast. <laughs> I'll be good.